You're the Traveler, and your Paimon is familiar. Paimon is a guide! Jeez, these rumors are getting out of control. Well, okay, maybe this one's not that bad. It does make you seem super powerful and mysterious, Traveler. Wait, is there something special about those names? You haven't heard? Nope. <laughs> Learn well from him, Kachina. It's unlikely you've ever had a teacher of greater merit. Really? To earn that kind of praise from the chief? You guys must be even stronger than I thought! Apologies for not trusting your word. Oh, don't worry about it. You were just doing your duty. Well, Kachina's still young, so you can never be too careful. As for you, Kachina, isn't registration about to close? Why haven't you headed out yet? Don't worry, Chief. I told my teammates to go ahead. I'll catch up with them in a bit. I may not be much of a fighter, but I am quick on my feet. <laughs> Kachina's trying not to worry him, huh? I see. Well, I... I hope I wasn't interrupting anything just now. If I did, just tell me where you left off, and I might be able to help with the explanations. Let me think. I told them about the Lyab, so now's the perfect time to dive into ancient names. Good thing you're here, Chief. I don't think I could explain it very well. Oh, right! That word kept popping up in our conversation earlier. So what does it mean exactly? Well, Natlan is a nation of heroes, whose valiant deeds are preserved and passed down over time in the form of stories. You can think of an ancient name almost like a label for these stories. By mentioning an ancient name, we remind ourselves of the epic sagas of heroes past. For example, the most famous bear of my ancient name fought in 27 Night Warden Wars. By the time he fought in his last one, he was already over 60 years old! Even though he wasn't quite where he used to be physically speaking, he still managed to achieve top rankings during the pilgrimage. Impressive, right? Ancient names allow us to preserve the stories of the past, but they're also much more than that. Think of an ancient name almost like an heirloom passed down from generation to generation. Do you have your stone on you, Kachina? Of course! Here, take a look. Whoa, that black stone looks so mysterious. It's like there's something shiny inside it. The Wyab decide who is deserving of inheriting an ancient name. Once a successor is selected, the name becomes theirs to bear, and their deeds are then preserved within it. As time passes, ancient names come to represent the heroic deeds of more and more bearers, and their value becomes even more profound. In turn, the accomplishments preserved within it serve as an inspiration for the next generation of successors. Just like me. <laughs> I'm still not sure why our Wyab chose me of all people. But if I didn't know the stories of all the past heroes, how they never stopped fighting, I probably would have given up a long time ago. Then you're saying the stone doesn't have any actual power? Like, it's not gonna make Paimon super strong or smart? None at all. And that is precisely how it exercises its unique value. Think of it this way. If you become a hero because the heavens granted you strength, are your triumphs earned or given? Oh, Paimon gets it! If people start to ask those kinds of questions, the stories suddenly become a lot less inspirational. Someone had this to say about ancient names. Our forebearers carved miracles into obsidian rock, yet future bearers looked upon them and saw strength. The miracles of the past become the motivations of the present. The limitations of the past become the breakthroughs of today. That's more or less the gist of it. So there's no rush, Kachina. Many people struggle to understand the Wyab's judgment after receiving an ancient name. As long as you never stop trying to improve your abilities and surpass yourself, your time will come. Thank you, Chief. I'll get it together, just you watch. Well, it's getting late. I've got to get to the Stadium of the Sacred Flame. Oh, uh, right. I'm not sure where you're headed, but mind taking a detour with me? 
Is that where the pilgrimage is taking place? Yep. And outside of competition season, it's the place where our intertribal gatherings are held. Of course. She's the most important figure in the entire event. Sounds like a plan then. Let's go. Well, if the Traveler and Paimon are with you, then I don't need to worry about your safety. Be on your way now. All right, we're off. See you later, Chief. I got so carried away just now, I didn't consider what would happen if our destinations were different. Luckily, that's not the case. Or, well, I guess we just have to meet up after the tournament. You sure it's okay you didn't tell the Chief about your team? <sighs> chief Pakal's a really nice guy. If he knew the truth, he might even ask to join me. But he's not as young as he used to be, and he's got some old injuries that still bother him. He's not cut out for any more attempts. He'll find out what really happened when he sees me compete. I'm sure I'll get an earful for lying, but this is for the best. Yeah, your teammates left you high and dry and you made sure they didn't feel guilty about it. It's not their fault, really. The pilgrimage is extremely important to the people of Natlan. We all grow up listening to stories about the heroes of the past and dream of becoming warriors with the strength to defend our nation, not out of a selfish desire for glory, but to lend our strength to a greater cause. Anyway, don't worry about it for now. Once you witness the spectacle for yourself, maybe it'll all start to make more sense. It'll also be a great opportunity to experience our culture and history. All right, time to leave our settlement. Let's head that way. Our last stop, the Statue of the Seven, is also in that direction. Let's go! is so pretty. Is that what the Pyro Archon is like? You betcha. Beautiful, effortlessly confident, and absolutely awesome. Oh, since we're here, you might as well go get your shiny new elemental powers, Traveler. Huh? You can get elemental power from the Statue of the Seven? Oh, just you watch, Kachina. for nothing. No, no, it's all right. If anything, I'm even more curious now. Were you really able to gain elemental powers just by touching the Statue of the Seven? That's something only vision bearers can use. C could you show me? Only if you want to, I mean. No pressure. Take it away, traveler. Still just Geo. Anyway, I was right. You really are something special. Just wait until you hear about our previous adventures. Whoa, what's that? Oh, that's 
that's a cuckoo soar. They fly high and fast, and they're always full of energy. Right? It's been ages since that day we first saw Devalin. We've come so far. Oh, before I forget... We've got a pretty long trek ahead of us, so here, take this. They look like shiny little gems, don't they? Don't be fooled, though. <laughs> it's actually candy. My mom made them. I always bring a few when I know I'm going to be out and about for a while. A little boost of sugar can really come in handy in a pinch. Woo! Paimon loves candy. Thanks. My pleasure, my pleasure. I've got all sorts of bits and bobs on me. I'm sure they'll come in handy at some point. Catch the wind.
quite the find. Put up Let's a good finish fight. this fast. a lot of stuff with me. As my mom always says, it pays to be prepared. They only come in handy every so often. <laughs> but hey, better late than never, right? Huh? Is everything okay, Traveler? Seems like you've got something on your mind. Yeah, that was so weird. It has to mean something, don't you think? Actually, you know what? It could be because our Archon is different from the rest. Different how? Well, I heard that other nations Archons live a long time and belong to a class of extremely powerful beings known as gods. And that's not the case in Natland? Not at all. Every Pyral Archon in Natland was an ordinary person before taking on the role. Huh? A human serving as an Archon? Is that even possible? You find it hard to believe too, huh? So that's not normal then? I guess I've just gotten used to how things are here in Natlin. Well, based on what we've seen, that's not usually how it works. It can't be that easy for a human to become an Archon, right? Pretty sure the Pyro Archon's the only one who can answer that. I do know this though. Even after becoming the Pyro Archon, the person in the position still grows old and requires rest. The statue of the Seven may look a lot like our current Archon, but that has to be a coincidence. Countless people have held that title over the years. Oh, I should also mention, the pilgrimage is actually how we select the Pyro Archon. Anyone can claim the title, you just have to prove your strength. So the contest is all about how strong you are. That's right. We believe performance in battle is the most comprehensive test for a future Archon. Plus, when someone emerges victorious, it's hard to argue with the results. Our current Archon achieved an overwhelming victory. The result was obvious from the beginning. Don't just take my word for it, though. Even the tribe elders said they've never seen an Archon with such strength before. But it's just as Chief Pakal said. Today's limits are tomorrow's breakthroughs. Our future Archons will go from strength to strength. Okay, Paimon's gonna ignore the whole human becoming an Archon thing for now. It's just, if she's really that strong, do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing for us? If we think back to what happened in Inazuma... I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Our Archon's a wonderful person and very welcoming to guests. I think you'll get along great. Yeah, you're right. It's not like we're planning on causing trouble either. It'll all work out. He'll meet her soon enough. All right, Paimon's just about ready to... Huh? What's that? Oh, we call this a phlogiston chislet. Good things happen if you infuse it with phlogiston. Uh, sorry to disappoint, but only people from Natlin can use that power.
behind you. Something's coming. What do we do? Is something after us? Should we get ready to fight? We're fine, we're fine. This here is Toto. Hi, you Toto. <laughs> it's me, Kachina. <laughs> Well, aren't we looking lively today? Did the chisel floor you over here? <laughs> Warm, isn't it? Oh! So it was just a friendly Saurian. That's right. There's quite a few of them around here, and Toto's the friendliest and gentlest of the bunch. He's always hanging around these parts. I swear he does it just to show off to any outlanders that might come this way. Don't let his size fool you, though. He's just a big softy. Uh, what does the crouching mean? That's an invitation. He's offering us a ride. Um, Paimon's not so sure about this. It's kind of scary, don't you think? He's huge. Oh, good point. <laughs> you guys have fun with that, then. Paimon will just float alongside. Wow, the sightseeing is even better from up here. The higher the vantage point, the better the view. Are you and Toto close, Kachina? Yep. When I was little, my parents and I went to the Stadium of the Sacred Flame to buy a bunch of different fruits, but the cart we were using to transport them flipped over on our way back. Toto wasn't even half his current size back then, but I still burst into tears when I saw him approach. I was afraid he was going to eat all the berries and sunsetias and leave nothing for me. In the end, though, he didn't eat a single one. And even chased off a few other Saurians looking to snatch a few for themselves. After that, he used his big head to help get our cart right side up again. I've been bringing him fruit ever since. Oh, and I was the one that named him Toto, actually. With the sheer amount of food he can eat, he pretty much grew like a weed. Before I knew it, he was already this big. Look over there! That's our destination! The Stadium of the Sacred Flame. You can let us off here, Toto. Thanks for the lift. It's an easy walk from here, so I say we head the rest of the way on foot. It'd be quite the trek for Toto otherwise. That's true, especially considering his size. Well, see you later, Toto! What's the hurry? Thank you. 
What's the hurry? Some friends here, but huh, I don't see them anywhere. Maybe they're not here yet. Open your eyes, Slowpoke. We've been here this entire time. I've already lost track of how long you've kept us waiting. Listen here, you. It's not just Kanish and Mulani's time you're wasting, but mine too. Mine. What the heck? That's a strange-looking Saurian. Or wait, isn't even a Saurian? Take it down a notch, all right? You don't even know some of these people. Just because Kachina's too nice to get mad at you doesn't give you an excuse to be rude to her. And what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> you think you're the boss of... Hey! Oh, what do you think you're doing?! All right, I've put him in a timeout for now. Sorry about that. Aw, you didn't have to do that. Hal just doesn't have much of a filter, that's all. I don't mind. Eh, he got what he deserved. Let's just hope the lesson sticks this time. <laughs> Mulani, there you are. Looks like you made some new friends. And here I was worried you ran into trouble on your way here. Hello, Paimon's Paimon! A traveler, you say? You came at the perfect time. The pilgrimage is a sight to behold this time of year. I don't see your teammates with you, Kachina. Where are they? Oh, uh, they went to join teams with a better chance at winning. So you're saying you've been ditched? Again. <sighs> that might give them an advantage during the team stage, but it all comes down to individual strength sooner or later. Yeah, well, I couldn't even promise them we would make it through the team stage. The outcome of the team stage usually depends on the ancient name bearer, after all. Hey now, there's not a single person here that can promise their team victory. You're putting too much pressure on yourself. Besides, you're not lacking in strength at all. You just need a bit more confidence. You were only three victories short of reaching the Night Warden Wars last time. Wait, so if the pilgrimage is like a national sporting competition, then what are the Night Warden Wars? The former is a battle of skill. The latter is a real war. A war against our eternal enemy, the Abyss. So they're here too. Well, wait a second. You're saying the prize for winning the pilgrimage is the chance to go to war? That's not too far off. That's why it's called the Night Warden Wars. The pilgrimage chooses the strongest warriors among the tribes. And those warriors fight to repel the Abyss in defense of our homeland. Their names and deeds are then recorded in epic tales passed down over time. That is the highest honor you can achieve in Natlan. Yes, but that's the nature of war. Danger comes with the territory. Resisting the Abyss is our duty. But we're not alone in this fight. We also have the blessing of our Archon, which allows for our safe return. It's something we call the Ode of Resurrection, which does exactly what it sounds like, basically. Resurrect people, you mean? Yep. So it's not so scary, really. Our Archon's blessing gives us the courage to keep moving forward. Let's go register. We don't have much time. Wait, what about you, Kachina? You're not really planning on competing solo, are you? We really wish we could help, but we're not from here, so it doesn't seem like we can take part. There's no threshold to the number of participants. With the sheer number of teams, it's practically guaranteed chaos. No matter how strong or experienced the warrior, victory is never assured. In a situation like that, it's always better to have someone to watch your back. Oh, how about this? When we register, why don't we ask if these two can have special permission to participate? 
odds are the answer will be no, so if that doesn't work, well... I only have a few teammates this time. If someone else could take them, then... You're not asking me to lead your team, are you? <laughs> Look at you, mind reader. So, what do you say? With how strong you are, it would practically be an upgrade for my teammates. Fine by me, but doesn't that leave you and Kachina as a team of two? <laughs> There's a world of difference between that and flying solo. Besides, we're a formidable duo. I bet our new friends here will agree that two's always better than one, right? Oh, you mean us? Haha, <laughs> you're right! Two is definitely better than one! It's just like the old saying we have here in Natlan. No one fights alone. But... What if I drag you down? Listen to yourself. You'd be hard-pressed to find someone in Natlan who can beat us when we're together. <laughs> Hearing you say that does make me feel a little more confident. <sighs> Still... Teams rarely contain more than one ancient name-bearer. People are definitely gonna think of us as cowards. The rules don't forbid it, so who cares what they think? It's not like they left us any other option. Well, I'll leave you to break the news to your soon-to-be former teammates. I'm not good at stuff like that. Oh, I know. They deserve to hear it from me anyway. Uh, just give me a second, you guys. We can go sign up together once I'm done. This is the place. Let's wait for Mulani here. Did you see the flags at the front gate when we entered? Oh yeah. There were flags, weren't there? Those are our tribal flags. One for each of the six tribes that make up Natlan, including the Children of Echoes. Why the sudden tour guide routine? <laughs> I said I'd introduce them to Natlan, and we've got nothing better to do, so I might as well deliver on the promise. Fair enough. <clears throat> Well, I'm from the Scions of the Canopy. We live high in the mountains and have the closest ties to the Yumkasaurs. My friend Mualani belongs to the people of the Springs, a seaside tribe. The scenery over there is beautiful, and you can find some really tasty fish. That just leaves the Flower Feather Clan, the Masters of the Nightwind, and the Collective of Plenty. If we get a chance after the pilgrimage, I'll be sure to show you around. Well, if we're talking tribes, Allow me to stand in for our chief and welcome you on behalf of the people of the Springs. Mualani, you're back! We were just talking about you. Everything settled on my end. My teammates took it unbelievably well, actually. Your reputation is really something else, Kanich. They probably just didn't see any drawbacks to your proposition. We're saying the same thing here. You, my friend, are a formidable competitor, and they recognize that. Anyway, thanks for waiting, you guys. Let's go register. Hello there. Here to register for the pilgrimage? That's right. I wanted to ask, though. These two travelers are very interested in the competition. Any chance they could take part? I'm sorry, but only people from Natlan are eligible to participate. You couldn't make an exception just this once? This traveler is a renowned adventurer. He's more than skilled enough to participate. And I'm sure the audience would be interested in seeing what he can do. It's not that simple, Miss Mulani. Even a single exception sets a dangerous precedent for countless interested parties in the future. The purpose of the pilgrimage is not only to select strong warriors, but also to collect contending fire from the battles. This is the fire that fuels the sacred flame. Natlan is only safe from the invasion of the Abyss while the sacred flame burns eternal. Oh, so there's another purpose for the tournament! That was the initial purpose, actually. Every participant, whether they win or lose, contributes to the defense of our nation. That's what makes it such an honor to take part. Exactly right, Mr. Kanich. Contending fire can only be produced in battles between people of Natlan. Outlander participation would inhibit the production of this fire, which could in turn jeopardize the sacred flame. Oh. So it all comes down to the contending fire. Well, you can still enjoy the event from the stands. I'll try to get you some good seats. That would be great! Tourists like us are better suited to being spectators anyway. Dale, 
There's something Paimon was wondering, actually. You read Paimon's mind, Traveler. Why doesn't everyone just fight together? You know, since you can bring them back to life. The power of resurrection has its limits. For starters, the Ode only works on those who bear an ancient name. That's also why ordinary people who emerge victorious in the pilgrimage aren't sent to fight the Abyss. It's for their own protection. Although, they're still afforded the same honor as those who triumph over the Abyss in battle. That brings us to the other condition for resurrection. Not much to this one, actually. <laughs> Just one word. Victory. Victory? The victors shall burn bright, while the losers must turn to ash. Only those who triumph over the Abyss earn the right to be revived. Defeat in battle not only means death, but also the destruction of your ancient name, preventing it from ever being inherited again. The tales of the vanquished are eventually forgotten, and an ancient name cannot survive when the stories of its bearers are lost to time. Yeah, they won, right? Isn't it the defeated ones who need reviving? You have to think about it at the team level. For example, five representatives will be sent to repel the Abyss this time. Even if four of them were to perish, the Ode of Resurrection would still take effect. All you need is for one person to return victorious. Because every victory is a building block of our legacy. Of course, the team needs to be strong enough for that to be the case. Otherwise, the price of failure is still very high. That's why the first stage of the pilgrimage is divided into teams to instill in us the importance of working together. No one fights alone. That is what we believe. A lone warrior is one whose defeat is final. This all sounds pretty dangerous. Well, that axiom is meant to be a warning as much as a source of inspiration. Danger is always present, but together we can move forward, united in the knowledge that behind every hero charging into battle lies the support of all of Natlan as well as our Archon. Not to mention, the Abyss isn't an enemy with a concrete form. We're often just dealing with the fallout of its scheming. I've actually fallen in battle before. I spent some time wandering the realm of the Wyab. It was unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. The realm of the Wyab? Does that mean the Wyab exists somewhere in Natland? Hard to say. The realm's not somewhere you can access by ordinary means, and very few people are capable of establishing a mental connection with the Wyab. We call this realm the Night Kingdom, a mysterious liminal space between the body and mind, life and death. The fact that you were resurrected at all is the worst thing in the world. Then releasing you from your timeout has got to come in at a close second. With reverence of the almighty dragon lord Kahula ha <laughs> lest you live to regret it. If you're done arguing, your registration is now complete. Huh. It all went fairly quickly, considering we all know each other. Now, I just need to register your team members according to their name cards, and you'll be all set. In the meantime, you can all go rest at the hotel. As usual, dinner and lodging for tonight are free. Nice. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, all food and entertainment before tomorrow's matches are on the house, courtesy of our Archon, family and friends included, which means you both get in on it. Come on, let's go have some fun!